This week on Gran Turismo, it's touring cars as we race around Tokyo. Daily Race B, we're at high speed ring as we use a banking. And in Daily Race C, we hit a car and we get a 3 0 second penalty for that. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Gran Turismo Weekly Race Guide here in 2024, week 29 and it's a high speed week this week. First up with Daily Race A, we're at Tokyo Central Clockwise, which is very small and very quick and we are in the Civic Type R Touring Car, which is a pretty nice car to use. I'm not so sure about it here though. The art updates are off, SR is on, so you're going to have to be careful. It's five laps with a grid start. False start check is on and sports medium tyres. What well, is on, however, apply your racing liveries and have some fun with that. We can have some touring car-esque grids here. Now, some of you will not like this race at all. I'm not that fond of it, if I'm brutally honest. So there are some timestamps there for you. However, I did do this race, so do stay tuned for it. Now, in terms of daily race information, this track has been used three times in Gran Turismo 7. This is the fourth time of asking. Let's jump into this race. Let's have a look at exactly what happens, as well as a track guide after, if you really want to do it. Here we are then at the start of the race. Fred's back in P1, dominated last week's race. Hey, we'll see what happens here as we prepare. So track control on one. Remember, this is a high revving engine. VTEC, yo, it's here as we get ready to go then. And all lights are out. Off we go then. Track control really needed here as we go to second gear. Even in second gear, arguably still needed. However, you've got a bit more chance to change gear. The ball bed unfortunately dropping back there with an atrocious start as we head towards turn number technically two, I suppose. Um, we're going to go into here, try and stay nice and calm as we go on through here. It's a very tight circuit. Literally, it's the size of a car each lane here. And you can see the understeer already. Alex gets understeer. Matt's power has to try and avoid. I tried to go down the middle. It didn't work with the understeer as we continue on down here. Then Matt's power on the inside. The German pushing his way through the middle there does freak as we continue on up here. So we're up into P9 then, and all said and done as we go into this right-hander. Once again, barrier bashing, going on up ahead, wall riding as we try to go on the inside there. Not enough room now. Mass power's going towards the left-hand side. We're three wide once again as we head down here. More contact as we go down here. And I'm starting to notice this German is trying to outbreak everybody. However, they did actually do a pretty good job there maintaining position as we go up here then. Uh, TCR Alex there with a five second penalty and actually bunching everybody up here again. You can see how difficult it is here to race. It's why I'm not that fond of it, if I'm honest. Nice that we're doing something different. Fair play to PD for putting on something different. I'm just not that fond of it. It's way too tight to race these cars. If it was a bit slower, you know, like the Jimny, to be honest with you, Jimny, stock Jimny, it would actually be quite interesting to race. These are really hard. But let's see what happens as we continue on in this race. Max Power understeering off there, as does Freak. We get the run on Max Power. Slight contact there. Nothing I could do there. It's more avoiding action. But we do have the run on the German who goes towards that inside line. Now, I said earlier, I was very conscious the German was trying to outbreak me absolutely everywhere. And here again, absolutely sending it into this turn, into the barrier. There you go. Max Power is going to go on through. I tried to get on the inside, but I can't quite do it here. And they've hit the wall there. And it's forced me into the wall now. It's carnage. It's absolute carnage, this race. It really is. As uh, so we're now looking on the inside there. Slight tap. Bit naughty of me, to be fair, that one. But they still remain in position as we go up here. Once again, I'm expecting them to try and outbreak me going into this corner. And there they go. They send it. But they've got a 0.5 second penalty. And they hit the barrier or wall once again. And we're going to go around them. So that penalty actually doesn't impact us in the slightest. We're up into P8 and we're on lap number three now. We've caught up to Jammy, a part of TCR, of course. Uh, Max Power's been pushing on as well. Uh, I think we're on for a purple lap here at the moment as we go into this fast right-hander. Look at the oversteer from Max Power. That was a huge oversteer moment. We do get the run on Max Power as we go towards that inside line. Let's see if we are purple. We are indeed one and a half temps. I remembered that from the race as we go down here. Jammy with the indicator on. You don't need that here, mate. It's a race. We're not actually on the road as we go down here. Max Power maintains position around the outside. I have to leave space. And Max Power took full opportunity of that one. Really well played there as we go up here. So you're also seeing how hard it is to overtake somebody. You have to leave space, of course, if somebody is there. So you're then compromising your exit. This combo is all about momentum. Speaking of momentum, Max Power and Jammy literally losing all of it there, hitting the barrier. We slightly tap Max Power, giving Max Power a bit of a push there as we continue on down here. The end of sector one then. 
And I do love the sound of these cars. I do wish we used them a little bit more, actually. A bit like the MX-5 Touring cars. They're both equally as fun as we go up here. It'd be nice, actually, if they were bots very close together. That would be actually fantastic. Through there we go, then. And once again, I'm compromised on the exit. Nothing I could really do there. Jamie gets slowed up by Max Power, who clipped the wall on the left-hand side. We're going to go down the inside, then, as we head down towards this fast right. And once again, light last lap. We have police space on the outside. Jamie's there, and Jamie nails that beautifully. Look at that beautiful stuff there from Jamie as we go up this hill once again then. So we're still looking for a way past here and the gaps are opening up because you need the momentum. You lose the momentum when you're trying to overtake somebody as we fast forward now towards the final lap. Jamie, still with your indicator on there, mate. And uh, I'm going to follow where your indicator is now. Go towards the left there as we head out very close into the wall as we go into the right then, slowing the car down. We both clip the wall on the inside this time. Constant clipping here. So we're going to head in towards this fast right. Oh, it's so hard to nail this in time trial. I will explain what to do here in time trial shortly. I want to steer off into the wall again there. You can see my face there. I'm just literally a bit frustrated because not from jammy just because it's so hard to race you know you get it slightly wrong and you end up in the wall and remember sr is on here as well so you can't lose sr we go into here then i just get on the inside of jammy then a bit more momentum as we go into the second part of this and we are finally through there up into p7 all said and done we'll advance towards the end of the race then and we finished there as well. Fred didn't actually win the race either. It came home in P5. But as the score, it's one out of five. The only good part of this for me is the start because I do enjoy the start. It's race length is a bit small. There are penalty issues because the wall riding can happen. There isn't good racing and the car isn't the right for the track. So one out of five, not the greatest in the world, in my opinion. I'm not fond of it in the slightest. If you are though, turn one. You're looking for that white... Uh, not sign. I couldn't figure the word then. The white sign above there. You're braking just after this. Now, you're going to find the car wants to oversteer quite a bit. So, you've got to sort of judge it accordingly as you go into this. It's really hard to do. And that turn one especially, I really did struggle with. Stay in fifth gear and then accelerate when you feel you can make the exit. As we approach the next corner, you want to turn in before that yellow sign on the left-hand side. Turn in. Now, you may want to lift off a tiny bit. Not fully though, like 75% throttle still engaged. So, you know, lift 25%. And adjust the throttle as you go through this corner because you're going to start to understeer a little bit off. So notice I lift there to 25%. I've done it quicker than that as I go down here. And that's why I could use a bit more of the circuit. The more you turn, the more you lose, of course, because the front wheels can't turn right. But you saw how I modulated the throttle there. Man up here then. And really for this corner, there is no brake marker per se. It's essentially before the crest of the hill, which is also where the light comes in there. So I've started braking now, which is why I've paused it here. And I'm only going to break a little bit here because I want to try and keep momentum through this corner. So I'm 50% braking and it's one chase cam because it's delayed there. So notice 50% braking. I'm just letting the car roll and then I accelerate through. Don't drop to fifth gear, stay in sixth gear in time trial. In the race, so do drop to fifth gear. Keep that in mind for that corner. We head down here then on the left hand side you have the yellow right turn signs this is the second one on the left hand side we've already passed the first one so literally as you get to that point just after it you're going to hit the brakes now this corner there's a lot of sort of wall bashing going on on the outside so do expect to see that in some of the ghost replays but as i come into here i'm in fifth gear and i'm going to accelerate through staying in a higher gear there to avoid understeer we approach the next right-hander. I'm braking really early, so I normally use those highway markers that I've highlighted there. But I'm braking here. So you have to brake before them, okay? And you want to turn in. And weirdly, on bumper cam, it looks like you're going to hit the wall, but you don't. You can get so, so, so close to it. Let's see what we do here then as we go in. We actually avoid the apex a little bit there. You can get much, much closer. As we go up here, you've seen how close we are getting to this now. Very close on the right side. That's what I'm talking about. You can get so close to these walls and not hit them which is why you also are going to hit them because you try and get as close as possible and touch them. It's all flat through there. And as we approach this corner here, the highway markers, once again, are your brake markers. So if you're going to struggle with this left-hander, I'd brake early and brake at them. Otherwise, you can try and push the limits a little bit by braking after they disappear off the bottom of your screen. That's what I'm going to do right here as we go hard on the brakes. We go into here, staying in fifth gear, again, to maintain a less understeer. You know, keep the acceleration going, maintain or reduced understeer. As we head towards this final right-hander then, you've got this soundproofing that happens on the left-hand side. You can see I've already started braking at it. And literally, I want you to stay as far left as possible for as long as possible before you turn in. That way, you're not going to go in too tight and have a dodgy exit. So that's what I'm trying to do here. I come in very late and I'm looking for that yellow sign there with the black circle on. That is my acceleration marker. 
So as that disappears off the screen, I'm going to start accelerating. I'm in fourth gear. I should be able to make the corner on exit and then start the next lap absolutely flying as well. That's my planet lease here. And there we go. I lift a little bit because I got a bit scared, but I didn't need to. We head towards the line then. That's a 123.9. Plenty of time in it. We could see 122s there, to be honest with you. But we jump to daily race B where we're at the high speed ring. Now we don't see this track very often at all. We're in the Bugatti Veyron, which does mean we're in group four machinery. And we are doing six laps here at high speed ring. It's a rolling start on racing medium tires and you can change the brake balance, but nothing else. And Bop is of course on. Now I did say it's very rare we come here, but let's have a look how rare it is. In fact, as we've only raced here twice before. So it's the third time of asking. Good to see the return to high speed ring, I must admit, but the racing can be a bit dodgy in certain situations. What we're going to do is jump into the race in this Veyron and have a look exactly what happens. Here we are then at the start of the race. We've got a Veyron in pole. In fact, most people in the Veyron. Sonic in the Mazda 3. Max Power chose the Toyota Supra, but the Veyron is looking very dominant on the leaderboards. If you are enjoying this video, as always, do give it a like and do subscribe to the channel. I appreciate all the support. And um, I can't believe we're over 50k. And we are actually on the journey to 60k now, which is mental. Of course, 100k is the target. So if you do have friends who enjoy Gran Turismo, do share it with them. Right, we're on the inside of Max Power. That uh, Supra, not the greatest in a straight line. We're also going to go down the inside here. We're on the non-optimum line. Who is on the optimum line, though? Max Power, look at that for a move. Overtakes four cars <laughs> from the outside. Unbelievable effort there from Max Power as we head into the S's here at the high speed rink. So yeah, the outside line on the banking is always the quickest line. I couldn't get there, unfortunately, just due to a car being on that outside line. So I had to take the inside line and just being very much more careful. It is something that you're going to have to look out for, though, because those that aren't aware that it's the fastest line will be braking very hard for the left-hander, while others will just be sending it into it. Speaking of which, this last corner here, literally you can send it into here as well by just lifting slightly. And there's a slight contact between Bold Ben and the Bugatti Veyron there. I had to lift there to try and make sure I didn't pit maneuver AMG de jour. Uh, so we get onto the start finish straight here. Now we're slowly catching the Veyron up ahead. We're going to go towards that inside line. Not sure why everyone's on that outside line because the inside is quickest other than getting slipstream, of course. We get on the inside of Max Power here with three wide here. And I pretty sure i hit max power there so i was a bit in my head like i didn't hear anything but i'm pretty sure i did well i'll look at the bloopers though as we head down here is that one red light one blue light oh my word that's an interesting layout there oh we got a spinner and this is the higher line that i talked about there avoiding hit the barrier just so we've gained a couple of positions alex has a penalty who takes that there we've got metal lake racer having a huge penalty on the left hand side we're up to p7 now so we've made some big big progress here as we head towards the last corner in fact we're gonna start the next lap here we've had a massive run on patrick the beast and we're going to go around the outside here. You just got to be careful at the end of this one because cars do get flung up towards this outside line. But there we go, up into P6 then. Hoonigan with a penalty. So that's us into P5. And then we're going to advance towards the final lap there. We've got Sonic and I'm very big boss up ahead. In towards the right hand, there we go. That Mazda 3 done very well in this race. Maybe a beat the meta contender this week. Remember, it has to be possible in terms of beat the meta. And there's not many cars that can beat the Veyron this week. That Mazda 3 maybe can do. I'm not too sure. Unfortunately there, the Mazda 3 just lit it off a little bit, I think, there. And understeered off completely on me, though. I hit Sonic, so I'll let Sonic go there at the end. Um, I did try and avoid him, but even so, it is what it is. Three and a half in terms of the score. I think the start type's good. The car and tire choice is very good here. Racing is possible. The half is... There are some penalty issues there. And, you know, arguably wall riding potentially can happen. The race length is too small, though, which is why it's three and a half. Down in that bottom right side, you can see the brake balance I use. People keep missing that. It's always down in the bottom right side there on the graphic, on the track guide. Always remember that if you are struggling. Keep towards the inside. You have to go into lap two to get your best lap. Otherwise, you are four tenths down before you get to the end of sector one. As we approach this corner here, your first braking zone, you're looking at that 50 board, but you're braking before it. The closer you are to the 50 board, the more likely you are you're going to hit the barrier on the outside. However, you can brake later than I am right now. The reason I'm breaking here is I'm trying to make sure I don't hit the barrier on the outside. I'm showing you a lap without wall riding. So as we go into here, trying to stay in this line here, keeping the white line in the center of your screen if you can as you go through that corner and we avoid the barrier penalty. Uh, if there is one because I'm not seeing that many to be honest with you. There are some there though. 
50 board for the S's is your break marker. So literally bang on the money here in terms of the 50 board. If you're in a different group four car, it may vary. But I kind of find that this corner, you want to be very aggressive into it. Trail brake all the way towards the corner and let the car come in very nice and tight there. And look at that, trail braking all the way to that point. We're trying to get round to the right side as much as possible. Give ourselves a nice run for this left-hander. We do dab the brakes a little bit there, letting the car roll a little bit. But two accelerating markers you can use here. You've got the Marshall box if you're focused on that. Or the orange painted barrier, which is a bit further around. Now, I'm recognizing the orange painted barrier, but I know where it is. So I'm actually accelerating before I even see that at points because I know exactly where it is. If you see the tunnel, it's a bit too late to go on the throttles to try and, you know, get on, get on a bit earlier, to be honest with you, as we get to the end of sector two then. Now, this final corner, it's not a brake marker, this, okay? You can actually do this flat, and the fastest times in the world will be flat eventually. It's just a bit scary. So turn in before that green there on the right-hand side, and you need to make sure you turn in before that. Don't be on it, because if you're on it, you're going to go into the barrier. You have to turn in a little bit. You have to get the compression of the corner. So I turn in, I lift a little bit there, and I've maintained a one, three, four, just, I'd say, I'll argue that, a little bit of lift off there. But notice there, you turn in before it, the compression hits, you go up a little bit onto the banking, and then you're done. 113.7 there. Definitely low 113s possible, I would say, if you absolutely maximize the potential. We're going to jump to Daily Race C then. We're in Group 3. There's lots of Porsches on your screen. And we're at Deep Forest Raceway. And we're going the forward layout. 12 laps here. Rolling start. Racing soft tyres, which we haven't seen at all, really. Uh, but you do have to make a pit stop. Time to fuel and tyre. And the bop is on, although you can change the brake balance. Of course you can. Now, in terms of track usage here, this track has been used many times. Of course, it has nine times before this week it has been used and three of those are for group three so this is the 10th time and for nearly 50 percent of the time is in group three here we'll see how it goes it is a popular race and it is a very close race as you can see there let's jump into it now and let's have a look exactly what happens here we are then at the start of the race. Porsches are everywhere initially. It's quite a good car to use here. However, as you'll see in this race, probably not the best car to use. Now, if you're enjoying this video, as always, do give it a like and do subscribe to the channel. I said it earlier on in the video. It's the journey to 60k now, which is mental. It really is. We're going to head towards turn one then. I'm not a fan of the rolling start here just because if you're at the back, you're starting uphill, which gives you a massive disadvantage. However, because everybody's so close together, you do manage to catch up quite quickly as you head in towards turn one. And look up ahead. Look at the stream and line of cars we've got here. This looks epic in terms of just the start of this race. Racing soft tyres really do help the start of a race just because everyone's got more grip. There's less sliding going on and everybody's more confident in terms of the car. So you can see why most people don't like racing hard tyres. For me, racing medium tyres are the perfect balance between, you know, oversteer and non-oversteer. Racing soft tyres, for me, pretty too, pretty much too grippy in my opinion. But even so, we leave this corner with five and a half seconds off the lead and we're at the back and obviously the lead is P1. So there's five and a half seconds. We've got 15 cars in there. Right, into the hairpin we go. Some people go for the outside line. I go for the inside line here to try and get the run out the corner. We get a max power. We also get petrol truss here as we continue on out. And if you look up in the distance, anyone going in the pits then? We've got Sebastian Lowe. We've got Shelty. And I think that's Natey's just gone in there as well. Uh, I said Natey. I think it's Natey. I can't remember. I, I'll look, have a look at your name a bit after, mate. I apologize. Max power, give me the bump draft here to continue in. P10 there as we go in towards turn number one. Robert Max goes very deep in that Ford GT LM race car spec two. That's a mouthful. We'll just call it Ford GT for now as we get to the end of the lap here. And once again, I'm going to try and go for the inside line here because people have just... Well, Robert Max is trying to avoid the Supra. And we get on the inside of both of them then as we continue on out. Now, I don't have the best acceleration versus that Supra or the Ford GT. So I decided to come in the pits to avoid the traffic. What I do do, though, is I change tyres. Why do I change tyres? Because it's a bit early, in my opinion, for a Porsche to try and... Well, you can't do the no-stop, in my opinion, or no tyre change in the Porsche. You do have to change your tyres. Lap two, it's very risky. So I was like, so I'll change my tyres. I'll just be safe. And that's what I'm going to try right here. You can see all the people up ahead. Nath! Nath, there you go. Nath has changed their, uh, hasn't changed their tyres. Neither Sebastian Loeb or Shelty. Lynch up ahead has had issues there. 0.5 second penalty. That rear is going all over the place as well for the Belgium driver as we go through the left-hander then. They're going to hit the barrier there and we're getting on the inside of them. It's going to compromise my exit a little bit here and potentially lose Shelty's draft then as we continue on out of there. 
Lap number five, going on to lap number six, and we're very close to Shelty. Someone's coming out the pits as well, and we're going to absolutely send it down the inside here. Can we get it stopped? Yes, we can as we go through the left-hander. Now, I wanted to get past Shelty quite quickly here because I had changed tyres. Brown Banana and well, where has changed tyres. We had a brief yellow flag there. We'll try and grab that in the bloopers. But Brown, um, Brown Banana up ahead had changed the tyres, so I sort of wanted to get ahead. Yellow flag up in the distance then. What is going on here? As we go through here, we've got a Honda NSX on the inside. And unfortunately, I had nowhere to go there. And that pushes me off the circuit as well. But look what's going to happen. Three second penalty. How is that? Three second penalty. And then I get a track limit one as well. What am I meant to do in that situation? I would have always got the track limit penalty. But yeah, it's very frustrating. We're going to have a look at the bloopers. You can see my reaction there. That will be a short, I imagine, at some point. It will be a short. So I did keep an eye out for it. You love my reactions, apparently as we take a three and a half second penalty, which is more than three and a half seconds on this circuit. Fortunately, it's right near the hairpin here. Robo Mags coming in that 4 GT and Alex there with a penalty up ahead in the TCR livery Porsche. What a livery that actually is then as we continue towards the start finish line. I was very surprised here at how fast that Ford caught me up as we head towards turn number one then. Uh, Robo Max sends it down the inside as we go into it. Goes a bit deep there as we look on the exit then. I'm pretty sure Robo Max is just letting me have that position back because I'm sure that forward is quicker acceleration. I'm not too sure though, but we're going to go into the right hander all the same and we continue on. Of course, Robo Max only made a mistake there. That was just, you know, just a small mistake. That's it. We still continue on. We still have some racing to go then. So lap number eight here. I'm trying to defend from this board. And this is the problem. This is why I say the Porsche is not necessarily the best car to use here as Alex goes off the circuit because that Ford is so fast. And all you need to do is get past the car in front in a straight line. And then you're always going to keep position on the mid circuit because it's all very much line of stern as we saw at the start of the race. Look at the Ford go around the outside here. So much pace in that car. Really is so much pace as we go into turn one. Now, I've actually done a lap guide in the Ford. So, the brake bounce for this car is plus five. I'll explain that in the track guide as well. So, I'd use the same in the Ford. And look at this for side-by-side -side action. So, I tried to maintain side-by-side -side Robo Mags, but Robo Mags has much better tyres here as we go into the right-hander. Now, I'm going to talk about strategy as well at the end of the bloopers because I'm going to show you all the tyre wear for you. Something a bit different just so you can see what cars have done what, what cars have changed tyres, what cars haven't, etc. And you can get a good idea. So lap number 10 then, I'm still stuck behind this Ford GT, which is why I'm going to pick that car for the race. I am going to look at this race in a bit more detail and try and pinpoint the absolute best strategies that we can. And also have a better race as we go down the inside of Robo Mags here. Can we get the job done? This Porsche a bit better at handling. We continue on out there. Got to leave some space on the inside, which I do there with Robo Mags as we head towards the fast left then. Still side by side, beautiful racing. The Porsche a bit better on the exits though, and we do get the place. But the Ford GT so quick. And it's the only place I can overtake them is on the mid-circuit. I mean, guess what's going to happen now then. That Ford's going to come very quickly here, but not quick enough then as we approach the braking zone. So we do maintain position for now. A little bit of understeer now. The tyres really showing their life as we continue on out. Shelty in the distance as well. Can we catch up to Shelty again here and maybe make a move? Shelty, of course, didn't change tyres. So we'll see how Shelty gets on. But the Ford GT catching me once again very quickly. I go towards that inside line then. I'm trying to defend this at all costs. There we go. The Ford GT round the outside and it's already past me by this point. Already past me as we approach turn one. I tried to send it a little bit here into turn one. Try and scare rubber mags a little bit. Not going to happen here as we continue on out of there. And as we go up here, I'm actually going to let rubber mags go a little bit here. As you can see there, short shifted to third. Trying to just fall in behind. Rubber mags gave me some space. So I thought, okay, I'll, I'll go for it. So we're side by side into here, which I really didn't want to do because we were sort of losing time. But it was also good racing. It's very bizarre because I sort of let it go, then I didn't let it go, and now I've let it go again. So no, it's good stuff though with Robo Max. It really was as we continue on out of here. If you're wondering why I'm not smiling, because I normally smile at this kind of racing, I'm still very frustrated with that penalty because I think it's absolutely diabolical that that was even a three second penalty. I'll take the track limit penalty, fine. But literally, what am I meant to do? We're just overtaking Shelty, who went on a journey there, and we'll have a look at that one in the bloopers. But we get towards the end of the race there, and race score, I've given it a 6 out of 10. Why is it a 6 out of 10? So 0.5 for the start type, because it's mostly good, apart from the uphill. Car tie choice is very good here. You can have some good racing, uh, and that's why you also get a 1 for that. Strategy is in there as well. Race length and randomness have put a 0.5 just due to the strategy, and there is a little bit of randomness in there. And you did just see the brake bounce down in that bottom right side. You can still see it, in fact, because I, I screenshotted it there. 
But turn one, the start of the curb or the 100 board is your brake markers. For the Porsche, I was using the 100 board for here, for the 4 GT. I'm using the start of the curb more than anything here as we go into the corner. Now, I'm literally trying to get it turned as quick as possible, and I'm looking for the painted orange barrier there as my acceleration marker, okay? With this corner, because I'm racing soft tyres, you can actually go for more V-shapes. Because you can grip more, you can overturn the car, and it should grip on exit. There is a chance of some power overstate in some cars. The Porsche doesn't suffer from it. This 4 GT has a little bit, and of course, the FR cars, the front-engine rear-wheel drive cars, will like the Toyota Supra. As we approach the fast right here, you've got the fencing that starts on the left-hand side. Turn in before you get to that. Now, in the 4 GT, you want to drop to third gear. I found that if you turned even remotely late in these cars at the moment, they just seem to understeer way, way off here at Deep Forest. So turn in early. We're going to drop to third gear, and it just settles the car nicely. And as we approach this left-hander, before the concrete starts on the left, you need to dab the brakes. Now, in FR cars, you can really abuse the sausage. In MR cars, it's a bit of a struggle, if I'm honest with you, but... Try and abuse a little bit of the sausages on the left-hand side. You want to abuse the concrete as much as you can because you want to get a nice line for the right-hander. Wasn't the greatest there, but even so, we managed to make it work there as we get towards the end of the tunnel right here in the end of sets one, start set to two. The end of the curb is your brake marker. Just to explain that previous corner as well, I did dab the brakes as I went straight as well, just to slow the car down a bit more. As you go into here, though, this right-hander, you want to trail brake into the corner, okay? And you want to really saw the car. Look at the trail brake in there. Let the car roll. And I'm looking for that red sign there. Red sign above the tunnel is my acceleration marker. I've actually accelerated a bit late here. I should have started a bit earlier. But some cars, you do suffer with some power oversteer. I was being a bit too cautious on the 4 GT because it does suffer on the exit here. So I was a bit too cautious there, and it actually cost me a little bit of time. Look at how much track I could have used there. Very much more space to be had. As we approach the fast left then, as the curb well, penetrates the track there the most, intrudes on the track, that is my brake marker for the left-hander. I want to start turning left before I can even see it as well. It will give me a nice line through this corner. If you remotely run wide here, you're going to go into the barrier. So I'm right on the inside there. I start accelerating using all of the exit. Now, literally, as the arm co ends and goes into the bridge, or the concrete starts where the tarmac ends, they are your brake markers. In the Porsche, I could brake a bit later and go onto the bridge, but in the 4 GT, I had to brake a bit earlier. The brakes are a bit naff on this car. Of course, it's American. Really small brakes. No offense to you, Americans. I love you, really, honestly. It's just a fun American joke. Be careful on exit, of course. You have to stay on the red and white curbing. If you don't, you're going to get a penalty. You fast forward then towards the final corner, the hairpin here at Deep Forest. Now on the right hand side, you've got the camera structure there that you can use as a brake marker. That's what I'm going to use here in the 4 GT. However, in the Porsche, I was using the start of the catch fence and I was even trying the 100 board, but it's a bit too late, the 100 board. So use those on the right hand side there. Really good markers, all of them. Uh, use it for whatever car you do pick for this one. So first gear here, I do short shift to second on exit. It avoids the power oversteer and this car has some pull. It has some grunt there and we accelerate towards the line. And this is a 0.8, I mean, just. We could nearly get into the 0.7s. Uh, very much low 24s will happen this week to so do keep an eye out for them. It's bloopers time. So I want to double look if I hit max power here because I was very unsure. Let's have a look as we go through the left. No, no, no. It's where it just pushes the cars up a little bit. So that's all fine there. No worries with that one. We advance up ahead then. Metal Ape. What happened to Metal Ape here and the Bugatti Veyron? Oh, bit early on by the French driver. A bit late by Metal Ape there. Goes for a huge spin. And unfortunately, Metal Ape gets a five-second penalty, which actually puts them behind the French driver. So that penalty is actually makes sense, should I say that much. Heading towards the fast left then. There's a slight tag there. That's from Robo Mags on Lynch here. And they're going to be on the grass a little bit, just letting cars go down the inside to recover. They're going to go on the throttle. And remember that power obviously I was talking about? Well, there it is. The 4 GT goes for a spin as well. So Lynch really did lose out massively from that. On board got XN, which was the NSX earlier on. But unfortunately for them, they actually lost it earlier than that. As we go through here, they lose the rear completely. And the weight transfer keeps happening. And they go for a spin. Fortunately, they do manage to get off the racing line there. And it allows Hero and Petrol Trust to go on through. This is their second accident then. This is the one that involved me. So again, they just went too wide there. And then they're going to hit the pause button here. Now, annoyingly, this is the AI player now. Reversing onto the racing line and then going to start accelerating. So it's unghosted right now because it's the AI player. And you can see there, I couldn't really do much. I just went off the circuit. I'll happily take the track limit penalty. But there's no way that deserves a three-second penalty. It didn't even say collision with a car on my screen. It just gave me a three-second penalty. It's an atrocious penalty, that. It really is. And I'm moaning about the penalty system again. I realized I said I wouldn't do it, but I am. There we go. 
Right, Shelty, unfortunately, gets too much power over there. The tires are looking pretty good, though, on that Supra. So, literally, no issues with tire wear, just issues with the driver, apparently. Sorry, Shelty. We love you, really. We really do. That's why Shelty punts me in the warm up. I will say that much. All right, we're going to go towards the end then to Laporte here. I knew it was Laporte, uh, but literally, you can see the tire wear there. So, no tire change for Laporte. Loeb had no tire change, so it is possible in that Ford GT. Uh, most of the side did do the tire change, they were in the lead for quite a while. Uh, Hodgson didn't, and you can see the tire wear there on the NSX is very good indeed. As we go through these, a lot more of these are tired. They did change their tires, including myself here, which you're going to see is very low. So I would advise most people to change tires in this race. Uh, the very echelons, the higher end A plus drivers, you can get away without tire changes. But I would argue anybody lower than an A plus, especially, do the tire change. Make yourself comfortable. Enjoy the fact that you can race. But maybe tire change or do the pit stop on lap three onwards in terms of a tire change and risk it from that point. If you have enjoyed this video, as always, do a good like and do subscribe to the channel. That is it for this video as well. Two videos there to check out. Two companies to check out as well. GT Mega, use code Tijani at checkout. Or alternatively, if you're buying from Fanatec, check out my link in the description. It helps the channel out massively and I appreciate your support. Thanks for watching as always and I hope to see you in another video or live stream again very soon.